Welcome to the Love Positivism Podcast. I'm Shireen Oberg and I'm a yoga teacher and author devoted to the path of healing and heart-based living. And I want to help you to step into what you truly are and to your highest potential. On this podcast, I share with you tools and insights to help you move ever forward on your spiritual and healing path. With guests from all over the world, from different wisdom traditions, I wish to create a web of loving energy that permeates the whole world to create more love and peace. You can connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for more guidance and love. Hi to all you loving beings. Welcome to this week's episode. I hope you had a beautiful new moon solar eclipse. The energies were was really high and I felt a lot of things coming through in dreams and symbols and yeah, I'm looking forward to see the shifts that are happening the upcoming 6 months and I wanted to do a unique episode today which is the first episode that I'm doing all alone and I'm talking about the yogic philosophies and just the practice of working with different layers of yourself to come down deep into yourself and experience the true essence that you are the highest consciousness that which is one with everything that has created this universe because according to old yogic and traditional scripts the universe is unreal and the highest consciousness is the only real thing so that means that this highest consciousness is also part of us and we're a part of it so i discussed this a little bit in this episode I hope that you find it helpful and I also talk a little bit on the different layers of our being and things that I bring up also in the book so I hope you enjoy it and I also want to share with you that on the 19th I am part of a fundraising that is called Tune In to Heal and this will be a virtual online workshop that is completely um a fundraising that is giving some support and relief operations in India because people have been very affected by the pandemic there and I wanted to be a part of uh, sharing some Chinese medicine and yin yoga on the 19th the time will come out soon and I will post it on Instagram and the it's Samudra Foundation that is hosting this based in Chennai in southeast of India. So I hope you can join and donate and help out and be in selfless service. And I will be sharing Chinese medicine and the connection with yin yoga. We will practice yin yoga together. And lastly, I just want to thank my beautiful show partners Ace of Air which is our a newly launched beauty and wellness brand committed to products that put people and planet above all that is selfless service their line of clean vegan and cruelty free skincare and supplements have been synergistically formulated at the intersection of herbalist wisdom and modern science focusing on rituals that work from the inside out. Inspired by Mother Nature's ability to create abundance without waste, Ace of Air is the first and only beauty and wellness brand designed to be entirely circular and fully zero waste. And you can explore more at aceofair.com and on their Instagram page. And I hope that this time of change helps you to grow on all levels and I hope that this episode will help you to dive deeper into yourself.
I want to share a quote from my book, The Law of Positivism, Live a Life of Higher Vibrations, Love and Gratitude. I've written that each problem or obstacle is there for our soul's growth. And I believe that the soul has come to this life to learn specific things through specific situations. I'm so excited to be here with you and to share a little bit of the process and the experiences that help me to be able to put this uh, book together and share it with you. And this is a truly magical time because there's so much going on right now. We have been experiencing eclipses and we're going to have a solstice and we're in the midst of a retrograde. So it's a lot of things happening which help us also to go further and deeper within us. And we can take a short break and pause a little bit to not just forge ahead all the time and to try to get somewhere or try to be something else, but to be here very much in the present moment in your authentic self and as I also wrote in the book life is way too short to waste it by not being our authentic self so I want to talk a little bit about the concept of the self and our identity and what we identify with so when we have this human experience our bodies are made from the soil and from the minerals and from everything that is earth, that is food, that is nurturing us. And there's also an important spark, that beautiful universal spark that is igniting our body to be alive, to not just be a mass, but to live and, and the consciousness that we have that we are aware of everything that is around us. And we are also made through a union, the union of yin and yang, or night and day, masculine and feminine. There is a union of that active and passive energy that takes place at conception. And the union is sacred love, which means that even if you feed a baby and give it the clothes that it needs if you don't give it love it cannot survive so we're made from these different components and we experience life through our senses and our senses do are like our our receptors to experience this dimension and this form of life and it does limit us uh, in time and space because if you're, if you're not completely present, you're not experiencing everything fully. So if you're, you see a flower and you have that moment with the flower, you can smell it right now, but you can't uh, walk away from it and smell it later. So it's really important to be present in your senses. And the senses should not control us. It, it can guide us and we can use it as uh, tools to get, be guided. Uh, we are not completely defined by our senses either. But our senses help us to find meaning and connection with the world around us. And this is connected to our physical body. So on, on my path, an important component of healing and growing was to be completely aware of my physical body first, because it is the foundation that we are creating this life with. So if we're not taking care of the body, not listening to the signals of the body, and not being aware of what's 
happening in the body, the food we eat, uh, the way we move, we're also losing touch with the more subtle parts of ourselves. So an important practice is to have self-care and self-love. The physical health is a is a component to experience life since this is our vehicle in life. So we can always stop and check in and see what where we're completely in self-love and compassion to our body and when we're not. And that starts also in the mind with our thinking and what we're affirming to ourselves. And when we're completely in the mind, we lose touch with the body. So there's a balance that's needed. The body is earthed and the mind could be more airy and not earthed at all. So with this thought of that we we do consist of the physical body and the mind body with the mind body is more subtle but it's really clear because we can hear it and we start identifying with the thoughts and thinking that the thoughts are us that we are the thoughts because they sound like us but they're also filled with beliefs and words that are not our own And most of the time we're thinking things that are limiting us. So being completely aware of the mind, how we're using it as a tool instead of it using us. We can start connecting the physical body with the mind and we become creators instead of just being slaves to the mind. And that's why yoga and meditation has been beautiful practice for both layers both the physical body and the mental body for me on my path and these two of course connect with our emotions we feel our emotions through our body and what we think are always affecting our emotions and emotions are affecting our physical body and our thoughts so they're connected but they're still not the true you the true essence that you are, but you have it as tools again, guidance, compasses. The emotions let you connect to your heart an even deeper space in your physical body. And the emotions are just as the elements of the earth They're connected to your physical health. They're connected to an energetic state that you're in. And we're never disattached from nature or earth. We're always connected. So it means that as the seasons go and what elements we're experiencing around us and if we're experiencing things that are are emotionally uh, just uh, affecting us in different ways... It also affects our body and it affects the way our energy moves. So in Chinese medicine, all emotions have a direction. And there's also this notion in Chinese traditional Chinese medicine that the balance of these emotions are important. So we're not here just to experience one type of emotion and one emotion can't take completely over. You can't be completely... Uh, always manic and happy and joyful it can it can it's a lot of fire in that there's also a need to be grounded but also a need to be connected to all your emotions to have a balance and in yoga we also say that these emotions come and go the physical body changes our mental body our thoughts change they, therefore, they are still not us. The I or the you or your highest consciousness is constant. So it doesn't change. And whatever happens around you or within your physical body, or it's, it still remains cons- consistent. It is not changing. Your personality might change. 
with the years that go or your mental and logical essence and, and layer might uh, change as you learn and experience your physical body ages but the one that is staring out through your eyes that has always been there from you were a baby a child if you remember until now is, is the same you're an experiencer of this life so when we work even deeper with ourselves and these layers we can go one step deeper into our, our uh, energetic body which I just mentioned are really connected to also our emotions and also the movement and the food we eat it's it's this chi this what keeps the body going that is the energy of digestion of the heart beating and all of this, these mechanics that we take for granted, why is it there? There must be some type of energy, like everything else in life. There is an energy behind it, which makes you your body warm. It gives you movement. It even energizes your emotions and your thoughts. And the different layers of these emotional... Uh, levels like the ch chakras, um, our auric field, the chi and prana, all of these also connect to the previous layers that I just mentioned. They're all connected. So when we're working with practices to become aware of our, our energetic body, we can go even deeper into ourselves because usually we're not taught to do that and we're not taught that everything is made up by energy and frequency the plants all of life everything around us and we can sense it we can feel it even if we can't see it or maybe some people can see it as well And another important layer of ourself is the spiritual side, which takes us even deeper, can take us higher or even deeper down. So when we're working on the spiritual level, there is no time and space left. We enter the astral dimension. So how we are sensing things that are, go beyond the senses, opening up the third eye, which means the eye of intuition. This is a higher seeing. And also a faith and knowing that there is a higher state than what the physical senses uh, seem to perceive. So in, in, the, in this higher state where we're also learning to disattach from this reality that we believe that we are in, which is the maya, the illusion, when we reach a little bit higher, we start exper still experiencing things, but on higher levels. And that can be very subtle and all of us must have had something in our lives where we had to stop and think of what just happened. It can be an intuitive message or we can have a glimpse into uh, another person's life or past life or an experience. Uh, it, there are so many stories and things that we cannot explain with the logical mind or the physical perception. And I love that space. That's something that I've explored since I was very, very young. And it doesn't mean that if you haven't experienced it naturally, that it's not there. It's just that like a channel or like a, uh, like a water pipe, sometimes it gets stuck. And if we're not using the pipe, it, it will get clogged up. So we have to 
clear out the channel to open up. And this is much easier if we have actually worked on our physical health, our emotional health, our mental health. So it's like layers. And at the same time, when we have great and big transforming times in our lives, when we're really going through that inner darkness, when we experience something either within us or around us that is really either traumatic or just it can be a small thing that happens that changes our perception of life and of other people and of what, why we are here and what we're supposed to do. In all of that, when we descend, which is a lot of the old goddess stories is about descent. And that is the realm of of the deep, dark womb that we can enter into within us. And that can then ignite an intuitive astral awakening as well. It can come in shape of dreams or other type of experiences on the astral plane. Because when we're dreaming, we're on the astral plane because we leave our physical body, we leave the outer senses and go into our inner senses. But the dream state is still in yogic philosophy, not us. So we have still not reached the the highest consciousness that we are. Because we're still bound to a shape and form, a time and space in our dreams. And the highest consciousness is not in that realm but it's a beautiful journey for the soul to take in each incarnation to be able to dream or to connect with the spirit world or all of this work that I and so many other people are doing it's so beautiful astrology everything that is beyond the physical state So if we live in the Maya, that means that the obstacles are not real either. They're perceived real, but they're not. So in the beginning I said that each problem or obstacle is there for our soul's growth. And I don't think any of us signed up to come into this world to have a just know everything from the beginning or to predict everything and just to stay on one level at all times. Just as nature changes and shifts and dies and is reborn, we go through these cycles over and over again. Even in one day we can go through one of those cycles. So we are here as an individual soul experiencing this life and experiencing challenges, doubts, fears, anger, all of these things, injustice. And what it can be trying to teach us is to remember that we are not that which we are experiencing. I am that I am. No labels, no attachments, because just as the earth is not attached to anything at all, it just is, grows and flourishes, and even if we're not here, it grows and flourishes and dies and reawakes, so it just is, and when you just let yourself be, you can find that glimpse of an opening of something or just someone within you that is completely and mostly the highest of the highest consciousness, which is the logical 
or the non-logical, the abstract, the, the thing that we cannot even start to conceive in our minds. So in Vedantic philosophy that I've learned through yoga, we could see the absolute, infinite, eternal consciousness as a movie screen, a white movie screen. And the maya, the illusion, like the life we're experiencing as the projection on the screen. When the projection is on, we seem to not remember that there's something behind it because we, we see and start experiencing that, that uh, movie that is projected. But as the movie is turned off, as in death, we remind ourselves that there is an infinite, eternal, limitless consciousness. And that is also what we are. So we're also a canvas for this life. And we can see beyond the illusion. Sometimes when you're looking at the movie screen, you can still see glimpses of the screen behind the projection. So we forget for a moment that this is a projection, an illusion, a movie, a dream. And we come back and go back again, forth and back. And we can also remind ourselves in this metaphor that we are observing that screen which the projection is on. That means that we are the observer, the seer. We do not go up to the screen and become one with what we are seeing. We, can, we are of course touched by the things that we're experiencing. That's part of being human. So we can watch a movie on the screen and start crying because we have compassion for the characters in the movie. And that's what we have here as well as human in this life. We experience the different states, but we don't stay there. It's when we stay in certain times and in certain places we worry about what's coming next or why we are holding on to things that are not serving us. That's when we have so much attachment, so we're one with everything that happens. We can see the obstacles instead from the observer and depending on the level of the obstacle and our own experiences and our own perception we can work with it as a tool and something that helps us to grow instead. And in my book, I really go through the steps of working with each layer of your body to help you to also find that inner essence, which is connected to a divine purpose. And the main purpose is to be. It doesn't have to be attached with anything outside of you. We've learned that we are worth that which the outside is judging us to be. And we measure ourselves from the external as well. But everything that is external is ever changing. Our body is changing, our work, our relationships. And the one constant is, is this higher consciousness which is manifested here in individual form. And in deep sleep, when we wake up from a deep sleep, we are not conscious or aware of what we did for the past hours. There was no perception, no dreams. The body was completely left there and we wake up, feel rested and in that deep sleep state we're truly one with what source we came from 
And that can be experienced through meditation, through inner work. So we don't have to wait until an afterlife to do that. In this life, we're here to work with ourselves, to raise our vibrations and live our highest potential as a higher consciousness. This higher consciousness is also attached to the soul and the physical body. But we are that which is that. I love the mantra, so ham, I am. Breathing in, you can repeat so, exhaling on ham. It reminds you that you are here and now and that you are. And that's it. There's no need to be anything, anyone or anywhere else. There is a divine purpose of you being here in this shape and form. No need to change or control anything. And to, to let go is to release control. As long as we're attached to the physical and to the experiences around us that have been or will be, we are trapped in, in a bondage in this maya. And through the process of our soul, it takes time that we have to come into complete remembrance that we're not actually anything of that. And I want to end this talk with a beautiful mantra that is also in my book. It's called Asatoma Sadgamaya. And the mantra is a mantra to be led from the unreal to the real from darkness into light, from death to immortality, and then peace. So it's Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Mritam Gamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. It's in Sanskrit, sacred language of the divine. And when we chant this, we are asking to, to leave this attachment and to become enlightened and self-realized. To remember again what we are that cannot be conceived by the mind at all. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to learn more about these different paths of healing and learning about your the different layers that make you up as this being you can check out my book the law of positivism it will be released on june 22nd and right now i'm doing free oracle card readings for those that are pre-ordering the book you can find the link to the book in the show notes. Have a beautiful day. Om Shanti.